Yeah, I, I can hear you, Emily. We've like there's a tree surgeon suddenly started cutting stuff down in the a street. tree surgeon. Is that what you call it here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That's wild. That tree is surgeon. Cool. They I operate in the call it a lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah. not a lumberjack here. I'd rather be a lumberjack. Lumberjack sounds a lot cool. Actually, sound much I mean, tree surgeon is a very it's important it's sounding true. name. <laughs> <laughs> It's a different, oh, wow. different, like qualifying. Like that's the top of your game. You're yeah. you like, went to school you just for years for that. My, my neighbour, because I've been like working on like some loads of projects. We've been like filming stuff at my house for different things. And my neighbour's been building some new stuff. So it's been really annoying, banging saws, like everything. And they're finally like nearly finishing what they're doing. And then a tree fell on the part of their house. Oh, no. <laughs> like a whole new thing and now they've got tree surgeons as well as all the other people that are doing wow that's rough yeah but I've I've sort of got used to it like I've been going to my garden trying to listen to like an audio book and I just get this buzz (laughs) then I have to listen to the audio book really loud so they're like shouting at me (laughs) not relaxing at all and you get like two minutes when they stop and I nearly fall asleep because it actually does relaxing and then it all starts you're in Canada right? No, sadly not. Well, no, that didn't, didn't last long. <laughs> no, it lasted six days. Sarah was actually six like, days. Sarah was actually like my like. Um, I don't know. She was guiding me from above. <laughs> <laughs> Your guardian angel. Yeah, because I like I went out there, and like when I first got there, thumbs up, everything great, and then so my plan was to like go, like enjoy myself, have a bit of a holiday, see what's going on. And then, like, Canada was a bit behind the UK uh, in terms of, like, the response and, like, how serious it was. And then stuff started to, like, shut down. And, like, I felt super, like, alone. Like, yeah. that's yeah. the environment. I was like, I don't know anyone. And then, like, <laughs> one girl from uni that was, like, drunk and she was texting me, like, oh, my God, I'm in Vancouver, too. I was like, oh, my God, this could be, like, my lifeline, someone I know. I was like, let's meet up, whatever. She's like, yeah, I'm at a bar. And she sent me her location. She was in fucking Toronto. I'm like, what is wrong with you? This is like thousands. That's quite miles. far. Yeah. That is like, that is multiple UKs spread out across the country. <laughs> like, so it's not like in the next city over or anything. No, it's an eight hour flight. And I was just like, what the hell? You literally said. And then anyway, I like tried to do what I could. My own cousin who lives there just didn't re- reply to me or respond to me. <laughs> no way yeah and then I just got to a point where I saw a cheap flight home and I was like I just need to reset like I, yeah, I thought yeah, I could yeah. probably find some kind of job but I didn't have anywhere to live I was like in an Airbnb and I was like this yeah. is yeah. just so Not shit time. No. that's a really difficult time to start a new life somewhere isn't it from scratch yeah. everyone's in lockdown yeah <laughs> that doesn't yeah. really work very well did make it like in terms of getting a job somewhere to live I just would have been like by myself I would have just been like how do I yeah. meet one like what do I do um, yeah you can't go out do anything everything shut down yeah, yeah you'll have to try again though because it is yeah, a great place I probably would have just been spending all the money I've saved up like, <laughs> True. Just, just living by myself I mean having a worse life at least here like my parents live in like the countryside. Like I, I, I have friends that like I can talk to like regularly. Um, but yeah, we'll give it, we'll give it another go. I think. Um, I think I owe it to myself and and to Canada. Yeah, you owe it to Canada. <laughs> yeah, I owe, I owe my uh, my expertise and and energy. To yeah, definitely. Me. They they need it. They need it. It's yeah. a beautiful place. Even in those six days, I was like, this yeah. is like, so much better than like the UK. Mm-hmm. Just in terms of, like, looking at stuff. It is, really. And, like, it's so different when you go... We see it in the summer. Like, when I first moved to Vancouver, first of all, I had never seen a mountain in Canada before because Ontario is so flat. Like, the middle is so flat. But then Vancouver has so many mountains. So it was amazing to see. And then it was the summer, so there was no snow on the mountains. And then the first snowfall in the mountains, it's, like changes the whole vibe of the city it's so beautiful because you could just like 
you can see them from like pretty much everywhere in the city and it's just it's so nice that was yeah. one of my favorite things the first snowfall i couldn't yeah. believe it like the fact of being like in the middle of a city then you just look down a road and you can see like mountains yeah see i'm like this isn't real like yeah we're, all we have here is like that mad excitement when it's sunny for like two weeks in the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the, the brown thames of yeah. water that's about all you can see mm. yeah so um yeah, but I, i'm back and you know what i i was actually fine with it because like i come to terms with like this is happening to everyone people are dying perspective and yeah. I actually was like, wow, I'm dealing with this really well, you know. Such an adult. Yeah. And then, wow. <laughs> and then a few weeks into lockdown, probably about three weeks, I did a quiz with my friends. And an answer to a question was Canada. Something <gasps> in time in between. Oh. Broke your heart. <laughs> oh, 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 maybe I'm not okay. <laughs> And then ever since then, like whenever I have a slight inconvenience here, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah, creeps up on you. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I feel the same too. Like I was telling Emily before, like I had written all of our exciting due dates and things that's happening in my day planner, like before Corona. So right now we're supposed to be having like awesome photo shoots with our projects and like cool hand like hand ins and like really good milestones and stuff and been in Milan and things and so every like every new week I flip the page and it's like all these exciting things that I just have to cross out and I'm just like <laughs> sitting there crying sometimes crossing these like things out of my day planner such an anti-climax isn't it I mean like I'm not actually I'm not into like a American football or anything but they have their like draft and like the guy that got picked for like the first pick, like the best college student, which would probably normally be like a crazy experience. Yeah. Everyone loves you. And it's like, there was just a video of him at home on the sofa. Like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Was like, normally would have gone to a stadium with loads of fans and stuff. Yeah. And it was like, thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah. Crazy time. Yeah. Uh, Emily what about you how how have you felt with all of this um I think I mean I think I'm we're in quite we were, me and Sarah were talking early, earlier about it we're quite lucky that we're in you know I get on really well with my housemates two of our housemates have gone so we've got a bit more space than we normally do so like I'm currently using my other housemates bedroom as a studio so I've got a bit of you know extra space rather than just having one room um and we've got a bit of a garden, so it's kind of, we haven't got much to complain about, but it's just, I think the biggest thing, is just so disappointing. It's just not how we imagined this term would look like. Mm -hmm. This is meant to be the most exciting term of our degrees. Yeah. Because it's where everything kind of, all the hard work starts to pay off because everything kind of comes together and makes sense and is kind of, you get to see it all getting polished and looking a bit professional. And like, yeah, the photo shoot we're meant to have this week is with a really cool photographer who does beautiful photos. But obviously we're not having that. Um, and I think the kind of big climax of the degree show that is like a celebration of us all together as well. So like, you know, us all being able to have a really big, to celebrate together that we've kind of completed this thing just isn't happening. So like we had a hand in last week um, and it was all digital and it kind of, we had like a 3 p.m. cut off we had to upload all your work and you submitted it and usually we'd be straight in the bar, you know, just being like, okay, we've got like a bit of a break now to, before we start again tomorrow. And I just sat in my room like, well, I guess that's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think our big final hand in is going to be the same. We'll have this digital kind of cut off. And then that will be that, really. What's the deadline for it? Um, I've got I made a new calendar. Mm. <laughs> June. Uh, of June. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, no, that's, that's pretty soon. I was going to say maybe, like, things will open yeah. up. I mean, uni have already said they're not opening um, uni up this term. Yeah. Just because even if they did in the next month, there's so much they need to sort out. It's not worth it for a few extra kind of days or weeks. Not so really. we're not going back into uni. Out of pint, um, basically, is what they're saying. Sorry? It's not worth it for you guys to all turn up and have some pints. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Little shit. Um, yeah. But yeah. Like, uh, a guy, I, I talked to a guy ages ago right at the start that went to my uni. And he was in his final year. And um, I, 
we were talking about my final year and like Liverpool is such an interesting place. I'm like, it's amazing in the summer. So many like day festivals and all kinds of things. And like he was saying like uni's done now for him. Like he's just into the real world now. Like they don't even have like final year projects. I think they basically got guaranteed their grade and then you can uh, do the exams to maybe do better like online tests, but like everyone secured their like predicted grade. So he was basically saying like, I'm done. And I felt so sad for him because I went through that in that city and I was like, I didn't want to be like a bearer of bad news, but I said to him, I was like, it was so good. Mm-hmm. It, when, when you finish and, yeah. it's, and, and you're in this like place that, you know, is so awesome. I suppose it's the same for you guys as well. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing that I'm, I think I'm missing most about this whole thing is like kind of as a group, as a year group, we're really close. Mm-hmm. And I think we spent so much time with each other. Like we spent the last two years every single day from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. with each yeah. other. And now suddenly we don't have that contact. And I think I, I didn't quite realize how much we rely on each other's feedback and just like, you know, informal chats about our work really puts everything in perspective and makes all our work better. And not having that kind of peer to peer feedback, I think, is, um, yeah, it's rubbish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just don't get to see each other. Like Emily's set up these uh, <laughs> tutorials. She's like taking such an administrative like role. It's amazing. Honestly, I just need a bit of structure in my life at the moment. <laughs> I've got nothing to get out of bed for. And I'm like, so we are okay. trying to do like group tutorials without the tutors where we're just going through each other's work and helping each other out. So that's like really helpful. And I like this. It's, it's a fun time to look forward to. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Emily, before you joined the call, uh, I was just telling Sarah about my friend Alex, who's um, studying at RCA, and he had taken like loads of uh, like five, six years out in between his undergrad and his masters just to be an artist. And he was telling me how much he loved being back where he could talk yeah. regularly about his work and he could see other people's stuff, whereas he'd been isolated for five years. And he said the comparison now. It's like worlds apart. He loves being involved with people. Um, and yeah, I think exactly. it's so invaluable as well. And I think like it makes every there's like a, a friendly kind of competitiveness between us all. Mm-hmm. And I think we all want everyone to do the best they can do. And so we push each other much more than I think you can push yourself. Yeah. And like so seeing other people's stuff, I'm like, oh shit, that's so good. I need to yeah. step it up. <laughs> like go figure something else out. Yeah, I think, I think everyone has that. I think you need that. that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Like, um, I mean, if if uni was just done, I mean, you can do online courses for like loads of things. I know, but like, everyone I've talked to, like, because I was thinking maybe I might, I want to do a masters or something at some point, and everyone has said like, don't do the. I mean, some people can do online courses if you have like your literal goal and you want a qualification, but like yeah. being with people. It's just, it's just yeah. everything, and I think we're we're finally understanding that. Yeah, definitely. And, and especially like a creative like, one, like if you're trying to be creative, sitting in the same environment of your house alone every day, <laughs> it's like there's no like stimulation and like fun and yeah, you need that to be creative. I think the online thing is not great. I've also but realized also, I need like a a separate building to go to yeah I need that kind of thing of like you get dressed and you leave the house and then I'm in like work mode and then I come back even no matter how late it is and I switch off yeah I haven't worn trousers in me no I mean neither (laughs) (laughs) I've been in like shorts like sweatpants like pretty solid shock when we have to wear proper clothes again or just won't bother I mean why Yeah. yeah, I haven't worn socks in so long. Like, <laughs> what are these? Yeah, there's no point. Like, I mean, I've been out and about on walks, but you know, without socks, you feel closer to nature. I feel. Yeah, just going barefoot on the tarmac. Oh, I like my hair's getting pretty, pretty long, and like oh. I just, I'm just leaving my beard. So like, hopefully, I come out of this a man of the world. I feel. You're gonna have a little bob. It's gonna be lovely. Yeah. No, I, I I was having it. My hair gets pretty curly when it gets long. And I grew it once before. And you know when you, like, wash your hair and it goes, like, really, like, puffy? Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you had your hair. <laughs> and 
I went to work one day and everyone kept saying, your hair. I didn't talk about <laughs> I didn't it. say anything about it. <laughs> your hair. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, so I cut it. I like bitched out. It was actually just before I met you guys. Before I met you guys, I looked pretty wild for some time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't care anymore. That's what Corona's done to me. Like, yeah. I don't care about the little stuff. I just want a hug and a yeah. <laughs> And um, I want a cold pint so much, mm-hmm. like somewhere other than my back garden. Like, somewhere, what a pint is it? I want no. like a proper pint. That's you can put it in a pint glass, but it's you, I try it, but it's still the can, and yeah. you're still sitting there alone, like, woohoo! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not quite the same. And I'm, I'm sick of doing quizzes. Yeah, I don't, oh my God. I don't like, I don't I like a quiz. quiz. No, I hate it. The, on the, the yeah. weekend, um, Niall and I went for like a five hour bike ride around London because it's so dead. The roads are like open. It was amazing. I actually really, really loved it. We went all the way like down to Westminster and then to Hyde Park and like all around the whole city basically. And it was so nice because there's no cars and like you can just, yeah, it was really good. So I forgot like about like the funness of London so you're just stuck in your little neighborhood yeah I did I did one day's work um for that chocolate factory I used to work for where I basically had to drive to their different shops around London in a van and like collect stocks that they could sell online and it was places like Covent Garden like like round like Trafalgar Square like central London and there was no one it was so weird like there was just really weird people out as well (laughs) so many strange people out. and this woman like came into one of the shops and asked for a job and I was like what do you think <laughs> happening and on the way back to the warehouse I was with someone else in the van and he went to me do you feel ill and I looked at him <laughs> like Whoa. oh it was like a zombie film it's like have you been bitten I was like no oh, please and he was like no I don't feel ill I don't feel ill Promise me you don't feel ill. <laughs> it's so funny now. Like anyone has a little like even clearing their throat if you're in the grocery store or something. Everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> especially with people have hay fever. Like, I have bad hay fever. Like I'm sneezing a lot anyway. Like, I sneezed before it was cool, and, <laughs> and I'm like in the supermarket. Like, <laughs> don't do it. And I had loads of stuff in my hands. I was waiting uh, to pay, and I had loads of stuff. I needed to sneeze so bad, and it was sort of just like twitching. <laughs> it will fit in the corner. <laughs> that is life. Now. I went yeah. to be blood a couple of weeks ago, and it was generally the most exciting thing I've done in lockdown because I got to like leave the house. And if anyone stops you, they give you like a, a proper email saying you've got like explicit permission to give blood and all this kind of stuff. And I walked there, and it, so it's quite a long walk, but I was like, there's nothing else to do. But walking through London, it was quite early in the morning as well. It was just amazing. I didn't see another person, like, all along South Bank, all across through, you know, Trafalgar Square, all of that. It was amazing. It's like, I actually love London. Yeah. Like, doing that bike ride, I was just, like, the whole time, I'm like, I live here. Oh, like, nice. it's totally wow. still, like, but it's such a different thing to when you're, like, in a rush, so many people around you, like, constantly, like, ugh. It was nice to be have, like, a wide-open city to myself. I suppose we all appreciate these little moments. Like, you appreciate the small things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the main, I, I said to Sarah a bit, the main reason I wanted to talk to you guys is I, I sort of need your help. I need you to help me help you. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Uh, so I was saying last year we did like a little graduate thing where we people sent in their work and we did like a podcast. Like, I was saying that's how I met my hour and we helped show people's work on our website and stuff like that. And got people together and I want to do something this year to help students and like to help connect people like we did last time but obviously it's so much more difficult now that everything's happened and we can't yeah. play any of the shows and the shows aren't even happening and all that kind of thing um and I, yeah I'm just trying to brainstorm I mean me and Sarah were sort of saying maybe uh there could you know I was saying the best thing about what we did last year was I bought five random students together and like recently I talked to them and two of them met up in Paris like a couple months ago well, like, that's I, nice that was really cool that yeah. I those connections and they, they're still in touch and 
they're still getting stuff from each other. So I was thinking, how can I create that again with, I was going to say your generation. It is kind of <laughs> generation of students. <laughs> Our generation. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a few things that I've been looking at recently. There's this um, Anushka design mm -hmm. um, and they've rented a load of billboards in central London and they want to exhibit graduate work on them. Cool. And so it's like an open admission where anyone can, and you get, I don't know, three minutes or something on this huge big billboard, which I don't know, it's just an interesting one. I'd have a look at it because it's really cool, but it's an open, um, anyone can apply for it. Mm -hmm. so I think things like that are interesting. But I think it's so difficult because, I mean, we were had, we just had like this course meeting when they were talking about the degree show and they're still like, we have no idea what it's going to be. Yeah. And Are so, you going to have one, like, at some point? Sorry? Are you going to have a show at some point? I think they, they're hoping to. Yeah. 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 There'll be a, a digital one. They're saying end of July, maybe. And then something physical sometime, sometime, like, sometime. <laughs> That. in the next few years basically it could be in like they said it could be november could be january yeah which i don't know it just feels so far away yeah and i wasn't anticipating still doing this project <laughs> yeah like ready to be over <laughs> start my life as a career woman again and well, yeah how, how would that happen would you like finish it now and then just leave it till then and then be like oh shit i did this by the way like, yeah i don't know we, like i guess so because they are also saying that possibly we would have access for maybe like two weeks to the workshops at school so we could finish like our projects how we wanted them to be although two weeks is not going to get you very far <laughs> um so i don't know like w yeah i guess but were you they, planning to stay in london yes yeah, yeah. Well, that that's handy. But there'll be yeah. there'll be other people that are like, oh, yeah, so much. Like, yeah. there's so many students in our course that are international, and the whole school is like very international. And so, also, if people are in London, you know, I need a job by then. I can't yeah. just yeah. two weeks off to be in a studio making stuff, which would be lovely. But yeah, that was like the last two years. I like, blocked out the money for two years and not another half a year or whatever. Where or full year, I don't know, whatever this is going to be, but um, yeah, we need jobs. <laughs> I mean, did you see, have you seen the club solo things we've done as a course? Um, no, I saw, I saw you've posted some stuff on Folly, but I haven't actually looked at anything properly. I mean, because I really enjoyed doing them. I don't know about you, Sarah, I found them really helpful because it was just um, a chance to kind of talk about our projects, not just to ourselves, which is what mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of recently, just chatting away in my room. Um, <laughs> And so I think that kind of uh, quite informal but public way of doing stuff is really nice. I don't yeah. know. It felt really natural. A bit like, you know, this kind of conversation, it's very informal and comfortable. Well, that's, but I think it, oh, sorry, yeah. that's kind of the idea I wanted, like mm -hmm. uh, yourself, like people from different unis that can, that can actually, that might have similar um, courses or maybe even not similar because your common bond is your, in a situation and your final year project's been so disrupted yeah mm -hmm. you can talk about your own thing like your individual project but then you can also share with, like the environments you've been working in how that's been um and it, yeah it's quite informal and it's quite easy to put together you know it's not it's not too much of a pain for anyone basically mm -hmm. last year when you did the thing were they working on like a pro small project together like how did that work or they were just kind of sharing about their stuff so last year what we did was we went to all the degree shows and we like gave out like flyers and stuff and uh we just asked people to apply and we had about like about 80 people applied <laughs> and then we picked five that we liked the most um and then we invited them to this uh like studio in east london and we did like a a big podcast where there was like it was filmed and it was me and Tom who started our website and then the five graduates and we talked about different topics and we sort of brought in different people's disciplines and like and how how they can help solve like problems it was it was all about how can like the creative industry collaborate more which you guys do a lot on your course which yeah. is cool 
And that was the main premise of what we were doing. And then as, away from that, they did loads of like, um, kind of like it, stuff you guys would have done, like when you first go to uni and stuff, loads of little workshop things. And, and we put like our twists on it with that idea of like, how can we all combine um, what we're doing to, to solve some of the world's problems through, through creativity. Um, and yeah, that's, I mean, that took, I mean, we're quite lucky with that to get a, a studio space for free. And like, even the night before I was thinking, fuck it out, I'm getting like five people that like are expecting something from me. And I have no idea, like, I hope they like it. And, and we all have fun. And I think we were fortunate that we picked five people that were like, turned out to be pretty like sociable because yeah. If we picked the wrong people, then it could have gone so differently. Not yeah. to say like there is a wrong person, but like there's personality types that mm -hmm. might have gelled as well. And like, the, yeah, the best thing about it was it got to a point where I was like ordering some pizza or something, and I turned around and they were so loud, like, I couldn't hear. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, these. I only introduced these people. Like we all met each other like a few hours ago, and that was so amazing. So I kind of want to somehow do that again yeah but obviously it'll have to be online uh, yeah but i do i think like collaboration with people outside of our even like yeah csm and london i think yeah is important i think that would be exciting i think if you're doing it by video call though you kind of there's a certain i found like a maximum size that works yeah. fine with video yeah. call and then you get to a point where you can't hear anyone everyone's talking over each other and it just gets a bit awkward and then you have yeah. those weird silences when everyone's waiting for someone else to say something you're just there like yeah <laughs> anybody yeah. <laughs> I, I agree like and I, I did have the idea of like maybe bringing in like a some kind of like professional like uh, industry professional that could be involved like yeah get a group of photographers together and be like here's someone that's like more established and they they have that conversation um but yeah I think I agree with that because you don't want to have tons of people and how do you like mm -hmm. yeah how do you control that yeah um, I think a moderator is good it like what in whatever that means like I did this my friend um has a clothes sharing company like it's an app um it's called new wardrobe <laughs> it's really good I love, actually love it but so she was it's like uh she did this little like hackathon with a, a few friends and like people who are involved in the business and there was this woman who was like it was her her career I guess is doing like moder uh, moderating like ideas and things from from businesses and companies and people I guess and it was really good to have her there because like she had some like a bunch of activities that really like broke the ice and got out of you what it was like what important information kind of thing like so it was good to have somebody who was more like in charge and like knows how to get things flowing sort of and guide the whole experience so you're getting like really good things out of it yeah I think I have like just ended up with that. there's not something I've consciously thought about but naturally through a lot of our projects I have sort of become that guy yeah I'm like I'm more than happy to do that um and I was also kind of like I like the idea of maybe getting some like questions or like topics and like or, or presenting a question to um so in this way we can have loads of people so I come to Material Futures and I kind of pose a question to you guys that anyone can answer and you all sort of submit your response and your in like a video and we can kind of stitch that together and be like, this is how Material Futures responded to what should we do about toilet paper problem or something, you know what I mean? Something yeah. like that. Um, so I thought that could be like a more like bigger inclusive thing. Um, and then we can do like more of these like intimate conversations where people can actually speak and, you know, and hopefully I can take a back seat and just be like, you guys have yeah. fun and I'll just butt in if there's any awkward silences. Yeah, that's quite cool. So and then and then hopefully as a result of that we can you know get out to loads of people connect with loads of people and then maybe still do the you know submit your work and and we'll help people present their work whenever and however we can do that. Um, yeah, I feel like a thing that it, like our exposure has really gone from a lot like especially we we're supposed to be showing at Milan Design Week so that was like thousands and thousands of people 
and the degree show was going to be thousands of people. And like, it just kind of feels like it, our exposure to uh, people who we want to engage for like, for the jobs or it, just like exciting exposure has kind of gone away. So I think any way we can do something that gets more people to see our work is yeah. helpful. I think that my sort of game plan is I think if I uh, have these like conversations and maybe people answering questions that can build up like a community of people that are like now can, like uh, mixing with each other so that yeah. we get to the point where we share your work those people will be like oh okay now we can see like what, yeah. Sarah or what Emily actually did you know I spoke to them and now we can see their work and mm. that's how we'll give exposure and I think arguably we could actually get more exposure than we did last year through doing that because yeah. we're engaging with so many people beforehand through conversations through uh, getting people to answer questions and things like that um and yeah just making sure I want this first phase where people can really be involved because as I, I said to Sarah there's always if there's like a c competition aspect there's always that thing of like people people aren't gonna get their work on um and I kind of like hate that idea but like it is what it is yeah, yeah. so if you do this first thing then you can truly and if people come up with like the weirdest and like just outlandish and kind of like wrong answers <laughs> they will contrast with like really thoughtful answers and stuff like that there's actually then a conversation and it's not just like you're wrong get out yeah. of the way. it's like okay your ideas maybe a bit you know i think the kind of conversations you could get from though you know having a really mixed group of people would be so much more interesting than having just this you know group of people who all have a similar kind of mindset about stuff like this or yeah. opinions or anything and like when that. you're doing it in person like you have to physically be there whereas virtual you can get people from different countries different like totally different areas of the world which like yeah the virus is everywhere in the world but there's a lot of different experiences of it so I think yeah that's like one good thing about virtual is that you can like access people that normally if you're trying in person it would be a bigger deal to find yeah I'm, I'm talking to a woman from uh, brown university later on and she did a course on the study of memes and Ooh. yeah it was just, that's hilarious yeah I, I saw it online and i was like i kind of had it in my head that it was a thing like i'd heard like a rumor that there was a memes we had a whole um, section about memeology on our book list when we first joined this course. I remember seeing it and being like, I did not read that. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I didn't know it was a thing. I just messaged her on LinkedIn um, and luckily she got back to me. Um, I mean, I never used LinkedIn either. Like I got like a, a potato account, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an anonymous guy. But yeah, she got back to me and we're talking later. So yeah, I agree. Like, digital means you can just yeah, yeah. I also think digital means you can get in touch with people that perhaps in real life are either too busy or um I don't know would want to be paid to show up yeah exactly <laughs> we've had I think some of the most interesting lectures in the last few weeks than we've ever had all year because we're able to talk to people that a wouldn't be able to get to you know travel or because they've got not much else to do they're very happy to do a half hour talk for us so it's yeah, been really interesting. We've had some great people. Haven't replied to me. I've sort of been like, I know you're not doing it. <laughs> well, some people have become like way more busy. Like yeah. my friends, like I'm like, I can't now. I can't get hold of you. Like they're doing yeah. like, so many. I think some people have like gone hyper and taken on so many projects because they're like, I'm at home. Like yeah, have to do something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I bought a green screen, which I'm having tremendous. <gasps> Ooh, fun. that's amazing. <laughs> So, like, I was doing, like, um, bits and bobs of, like, stand-up uh, last year. Um, and, yeah, I was going to carry on doing it in Canada and have some fun with it. And then, obviously, being stuck in lockdown, I was like, what can I do? And I was like... What you really need to get? Well, one of those green screen morph suits so that you can make your whole body invisible but hold things and make them, like... I was literally thinking that because I was watching a sitcom yesterday and they had, obviously, just their heads. <laughs> <laughs> body was in a morph suit I mean I'm just getting the hang of it on like Premiere Pro and stuff so I'm just like learning how it all works but like already having a great time. Before Wonderful. 
Corona, we because we were still we're, we were planning on going to Milan, and so we have to raise a lot of money because none of us have money, and it's like not funded. Like we we need to pay for our own way, basically. And so every year we make like uh, the course makes um, like a fundraising video for what's it going on Kickstarter. So first we made. We made, we've made like three and none of them are usable because it's completely irrelevant. But the last one, we were like, we used the green screen at school and we, we basically like Material Futures was like flyering all of the world trying to get people to like care about our projects and like donate and stuff like that. So we've like green screened us like one shot. I was climbing up Big Ben with like a poster and like we, we did the weirdest things. <laughs> Emily was on the front of the Titanic. <laughs> It was so fun. It was such a fun day. It's completely irrelevant now because we're yeah. not going. And also it's a bit like of a it was a bit of a more comedy time in our lives. <laughs> it's a bit more serious now. Yeah. But they are fun. <laughs> but like what I found is because I'm doing it by myself. Like it, that's so difficult. Especially when you're trying to be funny. I'm like, was that funny or am I just going crazy now? <laughs> and like I I've definitely learned that I get like in that environment I get like power from people like definitely. I use the people around me and I like work off the environment but when you're by yourself and yeah. you've got like the teddy from your childhood look <laughs> that same face that you look at for years, like what's going on like it's working um but it's just another challenge on taking it as and you might as well see see what happens uh, I think we're all in that position where, like, people are kind of like, we'll let it slide. If I put out some really weird stuff, people were like, hey, he's obviously going through a tough time. Exceptional circumstances, <laughs> no judgment yeah. here, it's fine. Oh, in the future, people will always say to me, hey, do you remember when you did that weird green screen <laughs> talk? I'll be like, yeah. But, stressed a bit in my life. Yeah. Um, before we go, actually, Emily, I want you to talk a bit about your... Um, project about food bank yeah um so my whole project my whole project before this was looking at how to tackle food insecurity um and then all this happened and then food insecurity became like well food is the most talked about and thought about thing at the moment and people are really rediscovering what food means because it's one of the only things that we can leave the house to do although it's all kind of changed in the last few days but anyway um so I've been, I mean, alongside my main project, which is trying to make these kind of community cupboards, I've been trying to, I've been trying to make something viral, which is really hard. <laughs> I literally, our tutor was like, just make it viral. It's fine. I was like, okay, just like that. <laughs> I'm doing this thing called Doorstop Food Bank, um, trying to get people to make small, Sarah's made a beautiful one, um, yeah. to make like mini food bank boxes that you can put outside your house on your, you know, front doorstep or your front garden or the wall or whatever and then donate whatever you can from your cupboard so if you've got any food going spare in your cupboard you could donate it to these little food banks the idea being that we could fill our streets with basically kind of shared food because there's so many people at the moment who are struggling to access food um so that's what I'm working at the moment please make one Mm -hmm. if you haven't made one yet I think that has that has legs on it beyond um beyond uh, coronavirus like and that's a so. like like you said you you've put a lot of like thought into like people taking pride in the aesthetic of the like, have fun with it do some do some like diy you know i think like, as well like a few people have made them just because they've got nothing else to do and it's like an activity with a vaguely there's like a purpose to it it's not just like drawing or painting or whatever so there's been some really amazing ones that people have done and there's been some really um nice ones that kids have done as well yeah. So I think trying to tap into this whole idea of there's a lot of bored parents not knowing what to do with their kids. Um, and it's kind of going with my bigger idea of making these, you know, community larders that sit at the end of every street, a bit like a kind of post box, public object kind of thing that people naturally use because they know how to use them and they trust them. Yeah. Basically to get rid of things like food banks because everyone takes, you know, has a small role in this to help feed people who can't access it to make them obsolete in a way yeah um great idea thanks so yeah trying to make that as widespread as possible which is very hard and i'm suddenly in awe of people who manage to make things go 
huge. Don't start. Um, don't get me started on things. Like <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. I also think I just I've not I don't enjoy constant like emailing of people or contacting people through Instagram or Twitter or whatever. So much rejection. It's so much rejection. Honestly, I'm not used to it in my life. Oh, it's a nightmare. Um, but yes, so it's been interesting. The secret I learned of viral stuff, um, which is horrible and frustrating, is that it's all like vanity. Like your mm-hmm. banks would work if it was like, um, take a photo of yourself outside your house looking really nice. Then people are like, viral. Love. <laughs> Done. <laughs> With, if you said like take a photo of yourself holding a can of soup people would be like viral but because it's actually something that has a bit more depth to it and you have to make some effort sadly most people are like nah. which yeah. is so annoying like I've had a number of things where I've realized like this has no element where people can post a selfie yeah <laughs> it's the issue um but yeah so we'll see we'll see how it goes I spent a lot of time yesterday I'm spending about one day a week just trying to get it spread mm-hmm. to try and widespread it. Um, Cause I'm trying to, we've got so much other stuff we need to do at the moment as well. Um, but yeah, please make one if you'd like to. Yeah. You I, have to, but I will judge you if you don't now. So <laughs> I'll, I'll make one. I'll make one. Uh, Sarah, do you have any final thoughts? Um, well, about Emily's project. Yeah. Like just, I've noticed like, in this sort of corona context like so many more neighborhood whatsapp groups and things are made and everybody's talking about food like i'm in a wider one of the whole area around um and there a lot of people are like this person it doesn't have any money doesn't have any food like is there anybody who can spare some and then I'm in like just my neighborhood one where people are like oh I'm going to the shop I can get whatever people need or does anyone have like these herbs I'm making bread right now and like some guy asked it yesterday and about like four bunches of time got put on his like front they're like check outside everybody's just like getting things from the garden and sharing so I think it's like such a interesting time to like be talking about food and how we can share and stuff like that. So I think that this has turned into like a really exciting opportunity for Emily. That's actually what started this this aspect of my project. Um, It wasn't with food. It was with, uh, I don't know, a certain type. It was with milk. Someone was wanted whole milk for their kids or something and they couldn't find it. And then she sent a picture on the WhatsApp because that was like six pints that individual people had bought and left mm-hmm. without saying anything on her doorstep to make sure that she got it. Um, yeah. And the mutual aid groups have been really interesting because they're instant and there's yeah. so many people on them that I don't know, which is nice because it's not like you're just preaching to your friends. Um, and so they've been a really good tool actually to kind of get things happening really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, I will be seeing your faces again soon. Wonderful. Because I want to help you help. No, you help me help you help everyone. <laughs> that's my mission. <laughs> Fab. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for this. Uh, yeah. And we'll speak soon. Fab. Sure. Thank Thanks you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.